This is G10, and it's the best print surface you've probably never heard of. The question I get asked all the time is, what print surface should I use? And there is so much hype around various different types on the market. But this stuff costs next to nothing, and it leaves me with some of the best quality prints I've had for a long time, including PETG. Let's get started. How's it going guys, Angus here from Maker's Muse. So if you know what G10 or Garolite or FR4 is, then this video probably isn't for you. But according to my recent Twitter poll, a lot of people don't even know this material exists. And I really wanted to make a video about it because I've been getting some incredible results off it and it costs next to nothing. I first encountered this material when I was building combat robots because it's like a poor man's carbon fiber. It's incredibly light and rigid and tough, but way cheaper than carbon fiber. And it makes great top covers and even entire frames for the combat robots. But it's actually been used in 3D printers as well for a really long time. This is the print bed off and up mini from Tier Time, and they use this perforated sheet of G10, which is essentially a fiberglass composite. It's formed under pressure with epoxy, and it forms this really, really strong rigid sheet that you can print on. Now, in the case of the Up Mini, they put these perforations in, which is why you have to print with a raft, and you have to really go at it to get this off. It's a real pain. So what some companies started doing is getting a G10 sheet and then putting surfaces on them. And a lot of printers on the market, even today, like the Elegoo Neptune, do this, they have a sheet of Garolite with a build tack like surface on top, but the surface they put on top, in my opinion, isn't as good as the raw material. And I wanna show that in this video. And if you think this material looks familiar, that's because it's used in printed circuit boards. It, there might be a few variations to the type of epoxies used, but essentially it's a fiberglass composite. And in the case of the circuit boards, they use copper layers and they etch them to form the printed circuit boards. But in this case, we're just getting the fiberglass itself. So I did some local searching and it took quite a while to find sheets of G10 in Australia. If you're in the States, you can find it everywhere like McMaster Car and Amazon and heaps of different suppliers. But I eventually found a knife maker supplier here in Australia that supplies these brightly colored sheets um, for making inlays and handles on knives. And I bought a few different thicknesses to try out. The thinnest I went was 0.5 all the way up to three. Um, the 0.5 is way too flexible. It's still pretty impressive for its thickness, but I think with high warp, it would definitely um, be unreliable. And you'd probably have to use some sort of high temperature adhesion to stick it down to the print surface. But on the other hand, the three millimeter sheet is so incredibly rigid. Like <laughs> it's, it's crazy. Um, crazy, crazy strong. And in my opinion, way overkill for a print surface. So instead I settled on the 1.5 millimeter sheet. You could probably go to one, I reckon, but this sheet has a little bit of flex, enough to get parts off when they're finished. If you need to flex it at all, we'll get to that. But it's also really, really stiff and uh, rigid. So the really cool thing about G10 and why it's used in circuit boards is it's really resistant to high temperatures. It doesn't really uh, expand and contract very much as the temperature changes, which makes it great for a heated print surface. But what I find really strange about this material is there's almost no information about it online, despite it being used in quite a few 3D printers. The only thing I could find was this great video from Alec over at Matter Hackers talking about using Garolite or G10 for a print surface for nylon. And that's what most people, if they do know about the surface, tend to use it for. It's really good for getting keeping nylon stuck down. And we'll get back to nylon printing later in the video because I did have some interesting experiences using this for it. But not many people print nylon. What about PLA, ABS, PTG, flexibles? How do they work on this sort of surface? Uh, uh. I did a lot of testing. <laughs> For my testing, I chose the Longer LK5 Pro, which I reviewed some time ago. It's a larger i3 style printer with a fairly decent interface and decent features. It had a few things I didn't like. For example, the homing switch home to a V-roller, which is really stupid. So I modified that to a much more precise uh, homing switch on Z, which is really critical for this sort of surface. You want a really good first layer. And I printed a custom cooling duct with a bigger squirrel cage fan for better cooling but that's really only the only modifications I've done to this printer. It's still Bowden, and I've been printing everything out of Prusa Slicer with like Ender 3 style defaults, and they're really quite good results. 
I did a few different types of PLAs. I started with this bog standard uh, red translucent PLA that is from a company that doesn't even exist anymore. I think it's from like 2016 or something. I've had this roll for ages and I just, the results were amazing. So the thing about G10 is it has to be heated for the prints to stick down. Now you technically can cover it with glue stick like most surfaces and print unheated with PLA if you really had to, but 60 degrees C I found worked super well. The first layer stuck down amazingly. Like you could touch the, the brim and really feel how well stuck down it was. But after the print, the bed cools down and the parts self release. If you're impatient though, and you want to get the parts off before the bed cools down naturally, then you have a few options. You can actually just take the sheet off and then uh, shake it a bit and flex it and the parts will cool much quicker and just pop off. Or if you like, you can actually get a bottle of isopropyl alcohol and just gently spray it on the corner of the parts and then that will cool them down much quicker and they just sort of pop free ma magically. And I find the isopropyl alcohol is really important for keeping the surface clean and free of oils, which will stop your layer adhesion dead in its tracks and make, make you have all sorts of problems. You wanna spray between each print or each couple of prints a few little bits of isopropyl alcohol when it's cold and then use a paper towel to wipe it down and you're ready to go for the next print. And then as well with normal PLA, I did a lot of extensive testing with this Polyalchemy PLA, which has this gorgeous, gorgeous shine to it. And the thing is the surface has this really nice glossy look to it, which translates into that first layer. Now it is softer than glass. So if the nozzle does dig into it at any point, if you're too close, or if the, uh, the layers eventually do start to build up with a bit too much pressure, you will start to mark the surface. And obviously that will translate into your first layer. But if you're really careful, you can continually get these really nice glossy results off these surfaces. And again, cools down, pops clean off. But how about my arch nemesis, PETG? I've been having a massive pain printing in PETG recently. A lot of people didn't really understand why I was having such an issue, but I don't know. Like the glass surfaces I was printing on, it either wouldn't stick at all, or it would take chunks of glass away with it after the print was complete. But this surface, printed perfectly. 70 degrees C I found was a good surface for the bed temperature for these PTG prints. This is the headband off the Hedamami headphones. It's got a very thin uh, brim, like I think it's three millimeters or so. And it's just, it just didn't warp at all and just worked great. And this cat as well, like the first layer again has that glossy look to it, a little bit of a brim as well. But I just, I don't know where it's been in my life for PTG, G10 just, works so, so well. And also for PET as well. Uh, this is recycled PET, and these are Maker Coins done uh, with that. These look great as well. And even PCTG as well, like these two coins here, two different brands of PCTG, which is very similar to PETG. And again, they stuck down perfect and then self-released without anything added to the surface. Just make sure it was clean with that isopropyl alcohol. Let's start pushing the boundaries. What about flexible filaments? This is a roll of Polymaker's high flow uh, TPU. I dropped it and the roll like exploded. <laughs> so I have to be careful feeding into the machine. Unfortunately with the Bowden system in the longer LK5 Pro, it's quite difficult doing flexible printing. Uh, even though this is a more of a semi-flex material, I ended up going to the Chonxi D01, which I've modified with an E3D Hemera to print these flexible prints. And for that printer, I cut to size this much thinner 0.5 millimeter Garolite uh, print surface and I it is too thin. I would go with 1.5 if you can I just only bought one sheet of that by the way to cut this to size uh, It is fiberglass so treat it the same way you would any sort of fiberglass product You want to make sure the dust is kept down you take adequate protections, but really you just mark out the size score it with a knife you don't care about because it will instantly blunt it and then you snap it off almost like glass uh, you make sure you snap along the edge and it will snap very cleanly. And then you want to clear it, clean it up with some wet sandpaper, again, keeping the dust down because it is fiberglass, uh, but you end up with really nice smooth edges and it's really easy to work with actually. The first test I went to hot um, and the print stuck beautifully, but it stuck way too well. Like it took me ages to get off and it's really funny. It's actually got some of the green like impregnated into it. <laughs> Um, which is really odd, but it was really difficult to remove. So I tried again with the bed unheated completely. So the bed was just at room temperature and I tried again and the print stuck again really well, but it was much easier to remove. The thing about flexible filaments is they tend to sort of like suction down. And I find this on glass as well. It's, you just got to get like a little bit off. And then once you release that sort of 
surface area and that suction, it does eventually come away. With this octopus, you've got to release each arm, I find, and then you can get under it and pull it away. But yeah, you can also use G10 for flexible materials, which is really neat if you need to. Just don't bother heating it at all. Just make sure it's clean. Okay, what about some higher temperature materials? What about some ABS and ASA? Well, unfortunately, the longer LK5 couldn't hit ABS printing temperatures. I heat the bed for ABS to 100 degrees, and it just couldn't hit it and it actually went into thermal runaway, which is good. I'm really glad to see the machine has that protection in place. But even though the surfaces are much thinner than a glass sheet, and therefore the temperature can saturate it much quicker, uh, it couldn't hit that temperature. So again, DO1 was used for printing in ABS and ASA, and they stuck great. The underside of the coins look pretty rubbish. It's always an issue you fight with ABS because it wants to shrink so quickly. You gotta keep it hot for a lot longer and therefore your underside areas generally look pretty rubbish uh, unless you have really, really good settings. But they stuck down really well with a bed at 100 degrees Celsius and then they just popped free when it cooled down. So ABS absolutely works great. ASA as well on the G10. Just keep it nice and hot and then wait for it to self-release when it's done. And then we have nylon, which is what most people would use G10 for. And I had some really interesting experiences with it. So I think the issue is this sheet's just way too thin. Um, so what happened is to get the prints to stick, I heated up to 100 degrees C um, because they were starting to warp. And the parts, these, these gears did warp and then they like deformed the sheet. So I think at temperature, the, the, the garolite's a little bit malleable and it did actually deform it permanently where the gears were. And I just printed some Maker Coins that, with a sheet I stole from the Elegoo Satin, and they do work fine, but I had to scratch the surface up and put a little bit of glue stick on. So I would say if you want to use G10 for nylon, use the thicker plates that Alex shows in his video. Don't go with this thinner stuff. This, I would say like 1.5 is probably the bare minimum, but the sheet that is in Alex's video looks more closer to like three millimeters thick or so. Uh, so definitely I would go with something thicker because it definitely clear the warp forces involved with nylon are so huge That they can permanently deform the sheet if it's too thin. So what do I like and what do I not like about G10? Well, this stuff is cheap as chips. You can get it for as cheap as five bucks for a plate this size This is 1.5 millimeters thick, which is about 1 16th uh, in Imperial Freedom units and at this thickness it's Nice and light, but a little bit flexible, which is good for popping parts off. But again, they do just self-release themselves if you just let it cool down. And it is way, way lighter and less fragile than a glass plate. These plates aren't bad. Like these ultra base style plates, they, they stick prints down as long as they're clean. It's much the same process, but they're a lot heavier. And if you've got a bed slinger, it's moving a lot more mass around with this glass plate than it will be with a much thinner uh, G10 plate. Because as I discovered, this stuff's popular with knife makers. You can get it in all kinds of crazy colors, like this bright pink, although I then proceeded to print pink prints on it, which doesn't really help. But if you're printing a color that stands out against this, it's really helpful to nail your first layer versus a black plate, which can be kind of challenging to see those first layers. And I really like the first layer finish that you get off this surface. Again, it is softer than your nozzle and it will eventually wear out. But the first few prints you get off it, if you keep it clean and keep it well looked after, are really glossy, which gives you a lot of freedom and creative opportunities. For example, printing with a Hilbert curve like this. And you can really see what your first layer is doing. For example, this much larger print, you see where it's sort of been quite comfortable. Then it's been bunching up a bit, so it's maybe a bit too close. And really, really does help you figure out what's going on as your print's being laid down. But there's also a few cons. For example, if you're gonna use a plate like this, you need to use those stupid alligator clips, which intersect into your print area. And I did do a big run of maker coins where I didn't take the brim into account and it ran over the alligator clips and threw the whole thing out of alignment and ruined the whole batch without me knowing. Real pain in the ass. You could technically make some like slides to slide it in and out if you wanted to be like really fancy, but most people will just use clips. Or again, if you wanted to use an adhe adhesive to stick it down, you can, but then you lose that benefit of taking it off and flexing it, which I think is just so valuable in something like this. And although this stuff is very dimensionally stable, it won't be as dimensionally stable as glass. Like for example, you can buy this from bad quality factories for really cheap and it will come bowed or get damaged in shipping or that sort of thing, which is gonna make your first layer almost impossible to get right. But again, we've seen printers from companies come with bowed glass sheets. So I just make sure you buy from a reputable supplier to ensure that it's shipped nice and flat and store it correctly. 
And finally, it is softer than glass, so it will eventually scratch up and get damaged as your prints might be too close or your nozzle touches it, or just interactions with the heat and that over time. Like for example, some of the brims are starting to leave marks and that sort of thing. But it's a structurally really useful material, so even if you get it completely scratched up, it'll still work. But if you wanted to replace it, you can use this for all sorts of projects. Again, I used to use this for my combat robots. So you can use it as a really useful construction material and then just swap to a clean plate to get better looking prints if you want to. So it's like got a secondary life after being a useful print surface. So there you go guys. I don't know what's taken me so long to reinvestigate this material. I think it's because I couldn't find it in Australia very easily. But when I found that knife makers sell it, that was like a big breakthrough for me. And I'm gonna be using it for heaps of my printers going forwards. Because as long as you keep it clean, you can get awesome, awesome first layers off it and uh, really high repeatability. And I think it's really important that a low cost effective solution exists and is made known for you guys in the community because as a YouTuber, we're bombarded with the latest and greatest new bed surface technology. And I just think so many of them are just unnecessary when stuff like this works, but they don't really want us to know about this or mention it because they can't slap a label and market it because it's just a commercially available material. But there you go, links in the description below if you want to pick some up. I'll try to find links in every country. Uh, I'll link to the knife making store that I got this here in Australia. And if you enjoyed this video and found it useful, then please consider subscribing to Makers Muse because it is my aim to empower your creativity through technology. And I really hope stuff like this does that for you. And if you do have experience with this material, please leave your comments below because I think it's gonna become quite a bit more popular moving forwards <laughs> and I'd love to see your thoughts. Thanks for watching guys. Bye.